Well, good afternoon. It's uh, February 18th, so we're going to do the third week of construction. And we are uh, apparently up in the first mezzanine deck of the house with a camera. And down there uh, in the right upper quadrant, you see a couple guys on a rectangular piece of dirt leveled off. That's where our solar panel array is going to go. And the powerhouse goes on the edge closest to us. <clears throat> uh, also in here, you'll see uh, the relationship to where it is with the septic tank. That's the concrete thing on the left with the walls in it. And the uh, you see some partition walls that aren't full height. Well, that's pretty close to the water level. The other uh, space where the higher divider wall is, that ducks air through there. So it goes past all five of the places that have to have air. And then we have uh, the water cistern here. You can see the corner of on the right. Uh, just for reference on size, that's 37,800 gallon. Fairable size. Okay. So uh, where we left off, they had uh, they put a, three inches of concrete in the bottom of some of these holes. And you can see they come back and poured six of them. And they got a... a a rebar sitting in the seventh one, so I guess that's what they're getting ready to pour. This is showing us uh, that the teeth have worn completely off of this uh, turning sprocket and wore down on the center of the uh, <clears throat> small sprocket. So they're going to be welding that back together here in a minute. They wore off at an angle. Looks like they're, they're missing it from the back. I told them to put a piece of 3 8 uh, bolt, you know, shank of a bolt up here and weld on both sides because you got a really big gap here for the, uh, to, for clearance. All you got to do is make sure it doesn't skip. But they've actually welded these teeth back as teeth and uh, probably ground them to fit. Over here on the left is the, uh, the teeth that don't wear. These ones over here are worn because, uh, th th there are near positions where the mixer, uh, is at different parts of the mix cycle, like charging, mixing, uh, mixing, adding more uh, water if they need it, uh, turning and dump it out. These other ones, they just go across them uh, one time per bag. And this mixer's done uh, maybe 3,500 bags. So the, that's something that just wore out. Here we have uh, Al and Nana. We pre-stage all our stuff before we pour any concrete. So he's got uh, twice as much barrels of water as they need and this will be uh two sand and three gravels for each bag they're going to mix we don't bring down everything we can bring down we bring down what we're going to use the, for that day's mix Nell brought this the day before they uh, uh requested a, a new a single wheel wheelbarrow to roll this around and dump it in these holes they say it's hard to roll this uh um our two wheel wheelbarrow over this uh terrain, you know, when it's full of concrete, just too much weight. He wants to turn left and turn right. They're not used to dragging the thing. They're used to only pushing it. So, uh, wheelbarrows are cheap insurance. And here we are welding on our, uh, sprocket teeth. This is boy. This is, uh, ben uh, no, that's Al. Is it? Could be Benji. Might be these are two of the partners from the Ironworks. But uh, they work for us nearly full time. Uh, he's setting the welder, and the, the brother here is uh, with no helmet. He's uh, holding the stinger. You notice that they they have welding helmets. Everybody that welds on the property has got their own welding helmet assigned to them, actually given to them. Uh, they're auto darkening. I've never had an auto darkening helmet. I think it's really cool, but I've always just had a plain cheap one. I've had some nice cheap ones I found that blow out of trucks laying on the highway, like on Interstate 95. My favorite helmet came off a of roadkill from 95. Okay, so now we've uh, got these set in the holes here, um, ready to pour. So the three-inch pad that makes them all the same height on the bottom, no matter what shape the dirt is, if you bring the, the, that up to a couple inches, then when you set your, your column uh, uh, metal down in there, uh, all the... Uh, the bases will be the same height, and that makes the tops the same height, in theory. And here they've uh, 
towards the second row, started setting the, the uh, they put the bottoms in the, no, that's the second row. This is the same, the same position they were at a minute ago. Sorry. Okay, so we're we're seeing some uh, concrete in the bottom because you see there's a, you can't see it because it's, there's um, they use old uh, cement bags that are are, are worn out, uh, cause we always put plastic on the concrete to keep the cement out of the ground. They just buy it and just dump it in the ground. These are um, we call them uh, biscuits. <laughs> um, you, you can't quite make it out, but these are those trays they sell strawberries and stuff in at the supermarket. They'll put like uh. You know, uh, half a pound of strawberries in there and cover it with uh, shrink wrap plastic. Well, we bought the trays uh, off of eBay and they got tapered sides. The pieces fall right out. And the plastic you see here, here and there, that's the, uh, the Philippine, uh, bags you get it for everything you buy. They have these, uh, polyethylene bags that are just absolutely thin. They're like a tenth of a millimeter or something. And they degrade in the sun very quickly. So you don't have much built up garbage. In the islands, you know, it uh, it uh, just almost evaporates. It's like any kind of clear poly, you know, but this is so thin, the sun eats it up in days. And uh, we have a pretty fun, pretty full crew. Nana, he runs the mixer most of the time. Uh, Benji, on this kind of work, he'll he'll be dumping the stuff in. Uh, you have Boyette, he handles the leveling of the concrete, and. Uh, Al, he'll dump stuff in and bring back the cement down and does all kinds of stuff. But uh, when he gets down to time to finish, and that's generally uh, Boyette while they're mixing. And after they get everything placed, then uh, Nanny gets a trowel. And uh, we don't have any unfinished concrete uh, that's going to be a floor or a wall. This stuff they're doing right now, I'm pretty sure they don't finish it. But uh, they'll finish the floor we're about to pour. But they don't necessarily have to finish these these bottoms. Uh, these bags are 140 pounds and one guy can't really pick it off the ground and get it up on his shoulder. So what you do is what he's going to do is he's going to jerk up on that and it'll come up about a foot and the other guy's going to grab it and the two of them together will continue on up until they get it up high enough that he can carry it around or dump it or something. And that's all, all these bags get from the other side of the house where the uh, rock and sand is down to here. One guy stays up there and the other However many people you got, they're toting them back and forth. Generally, uh, Boyette does the, this picking up job, but he's got a bad shoulder, and we tell him not to do it. Also, he's the foreman. He's supposed to be watching what's going on more than, than actually physically working on busy days. Um, he just can't stay still. But uh, if, if he didn't do anything except you know direct traffic, that would be fine by me. And... We're just going to dump some concrete in these things here. Apparently, they're not quite done digging. No, they're not done digging. This would be, uh, this is actually column number one. <laughs> and one through seven, eight through 14, and 15 through 21. But uh, they're, they're going to dig the, last, the first one last. Uh... He's going to put a form around uh, one, one of these holes is, wasn't exactly where they wanted it. So when they moved it, they don't uh, uh, try to pack dirt in the part that they're that this off center. They'll put a form up and then they'll, when they pull the form, they'll backfill it. They can tamp it that way against the concrete. It won't be loose. Uh, still prepping on that, but we got uh, 14 of them in the ground. This is the, uh, got a new toy everybody wants to use it routine, so he's bringing down uh, bags of cement in it, uh, though it's not got the weight capacity the two-wheel cart has. And, uh, we're just mixing. We haven't mixed anything yet because the, this uh, pan they made up is dry, so this is the first, uh, mix on a, uh, on a pour. And they, they dry mix it. They put a little water in. Then they put uh, one bag of gravel. And that scrubs the mixer. And then they put all the other ingredients in dry. And once they got it stirred up, then they'll go ahead and put your uh, your water in it. 
and it's a uh, one pound of water for a pound of Portland cement. Uh, makes the semi dry mix. If they need a little more on a really hot or really, really windy day, they'll add a little water. But by the time it, uh, it's ready to finish it, there is no extra water. Uh, it's only taking them 5,000 bags of cement on these two, between the two mixers to get it where they just do it automatically. Um, nothing else there. And so he's using the new wheelbarrow. Everybody's got the, the new toy out today. I hope they wash it when they're done. These guys are pretty good at, at washing up. Uh, and they pick their, their trowels up at the end of the day and all the power tools are put up. And we don't have to tell them to do that. They know their livelihood depends on having something to work with. And these are long-term employees. So uh, if they have to stay over to clean up tools or put something away, there's no problem with it. They'll go ahead and do it. Well, looks like we got 21 posts ready. or 21 rebar columns ready. Okay, next step. <clears throat> We're going to dig a, uh, a lower place all the way around the outside. Two feet wide, six inches deep. <clears throat> That's because we don't want to pour an eight-inch floor here. Uh, we have poured some seven-inch floors that were up off the ground, suspended slabs, but pretty much every slab that's on the ground is eight inches and heavy reinforced. But we're going to pour a five-inch floor here. This is just to keep brush fires from burning up the solar panels. Um, and, and undergrowth covered over, you know, vines growing up over them and down the other side. So they're going to dig this footer and then we'll pour the six inches of footer with the five inches of floor. And we'll have 11 inches under where we, uh, we're going to set walls up. There's a bunch of walls. And, uh, this ground, they, they say it's like digging adobe again, but really it can't be quite that bad yet because this dirt has some moisture in it. Now, we had them pump out the, uh, the septic tank, which has never been used except for, for rainwater that it catches. And we had them flood this a couple weeks back to compact things. So there's some of that water down here or most of it. But uh, they're, gonna, they're digging this trench. And then when they get done, we're going to spring on them with some more to, to, for the other side of the powerhouse. And uh, folks are digging. I told them on these side ones, just throw the dirt up there on the side. They haven't got to carry it and dump it someplace. We'll get, we're going to move it. We'll move it later. And you got a guy digging a trench coming this way, and you got a, uh, somebody's dug a trench to there, and uh, he's digging across this end. That's that corner he was working at right here. He's, he's coming that way. This is back where we've uh, we've we've moved a whole solar array from the first uh, video on this to avoid having to move this 12 foot high pile of dirt of this really hard adobe. It would take them uh, three or four weeks for the crew to move that pile of dirt. So we just uh, this was going to be straight across except the bump out for a powerhouse. So we told them we just make the powerhouse the full width of the back. Just shove this back towards that rice paddy uh, back there to the dike. There's nothing much to dig back there. Uh, this is traditions in the Philippines. They dig a very neat hole. You don't have to have forms if you don't want them, a lot of stuff. Uh, like the, the footers and, and stuff that you put down like on a house, that you put the pads in the bottom, those sides are just absolutely straight. If you poured a solid block of concrete, it would look good. But they dig it straight because that's how they know how to do it. And, uh, the only thing that counts is that 18 inches of concrete that the the polish or the thing is going to house is going to sit on. But uh, this this dirt here is still diggable. I don't see a, a pick right here, so I think he's digging that with a shovel and probably a a breadth as a as a piece of inch rebar smashed flat. It's got good grip points because it's rebar and it's smashed flat and it's high carbon, so it uh, it uh, doesn't bend very easy. And they chip out little golf ball sized things of dirt when the dirt's hard. And this is also digging reasonable. But he's got a, uh, a pickaxe here. So he's apparently had to break it loose with that. Or it was easier. And you can see as, he's, as they've gone along, this hole's getting neater now. You know, they've, they've, they're, they're making the bottom flat. And you don't see any big clumps of dirt fell in. You know, this is going to go that way. So this, this little bit's down here. 
Well, they're off your screen. And here we go, another trench. As we go by here, we're going to see that they've done all four sides. Somebody's pickaxed that loose and hopefully they've taken a break in the sun they're working in. Okay, this is the right side. That Where we saw that guy starting this way, this apparently has been dug uh, within the last two days. I'm not sure this this series of pictures is two days or one day, but I think it's two days because that's an awful lot of this hard dirt to try to dig. This is the bottom of the southern edge. More of the southern edge. It looks like he's only got about three feet to go to connect that up. And this is the northern side. We were watching them digging back here, so that pile of dirt there is probably all there is on the north uh, edge of it. This is the west edge, and he's got uh, this three feet here to connect. So that's going along pretty good. We'll have to spring on them that there's a one goes down here across the middle a little shortly. Sometimes they carry stuff in buckets. They they actually seem to like to carry stuff in buckets. Couldn't tell you why. I mean, you have a wheelbarrow and a two-wheel wheelbarrow, and people tell you you can just throw it out of the hole. Uh, we're going to landscape here sometime. We'll, we'll decide where the dirt goes at that point, but they're going to carry it and put it someplace. And this is the north side again, right in the middle of the part that hadn't been dug at least on a picture or two ago. Well, apparently they washed the wheelbarrow out because this is a couple of days later. You see the concrete's already poured and the paint still shows on the wheelbarrow. Uh, this one would be uh, Al, Nane, Nane's daughter. Now, she's a year old and walking. I don't think she's much more than a year old. She might be a month or two past a year. I don't think she she talks much yet, but she's uh she's mobile. We don't uh want uh children, especially really young children, uh around a construction site. Now you can see our site, you look at in any of our videos, we've not got a lot of trash and there's no nails in the lumber you see down because we put things together with screws. And to take it back apart, they unscrew the screws, so there's no screws in the wood. Um, but you still have, you know, tripping hazards. And I used to try to put uh, bottles and stuff over these rebars in case somebody fell on them. But they recycle in the Philippines. So uh, you go by and you put, put the either glass bottles or uh, two-liter Coke uh, Zero bottles on these things. A day or two, they're gone. The, the local kids recycle them. Leave a string up overnight. It becomes something for a kite. The people that work for you don't carry off the bottles and the strings and stuff, but the, the neighborhood kids, and during the dark, they uh, they come by and liberate your kite strings for you. Okay, this time they brought the uh, the bags of cement down on the uh, um, two-wheel cart. I think that pretty much shows where we're at right now. So uh, this, uh, putting those uh, three inch thick concretes, uh, like pre-slabs or pre-footers, whatever you want to call them. I haven't made a name for those yet. Uh, they put those down for 21 columns. Of course, they dug the holes for them. And then they put the rebar stands that they made a week before in there. The... Uh, Plastic hose, you see, that's what they use for level to make sure that the thing in the bottom was the uh, same height. They've probably leveled this concrete at the top with the with the uh, the plastic uh, hose level. The other other end of the hose, well, it's off the. Here's the other end of the hose over in here someplace. Um, the thing that, that makes a difference is the actual concrete. My thing is unscrewed here. It's going to fall on the floor. Wow, that's backwards. So much for hiding. I probably pointed right at myself. 
This is a Samsung 7 camera. Works really well. And it's, uh, it was brand, brand new. It was $48 or something like that. Uh, okay. So this is, uh, coming to you. Uh, dead and obsolete a week ago film, probably, of Villa Cecilia. Uh, it's the Aquaphonics Project in Maragondon, Cavite. That's on the island of Leyte, same island as Manila. Uh, we're 56 uh, road miles from wherever they call uh, the zero point in Manila. Not sure where that is. You've got a, an area that's uh, 11 miles or so of city, one street right after the next. I'm sure that they don't measure from the closest edge because that's going to be constantly changing. You know, the, the place just gets bigger every year. So there's probably some center point, a government building or, or whatever, that is zero miles. I can figure it out because uh, there's mile markers when we go into town and, and we're at the bus station or something. I can see what mile marker it's at. I think, well, I'm not in the Philippines right now. I'm in North Carolina. Uh, they have finished up uh, the uh, seven bathrooms in the uh, the house, the, the poured concrete part. We'll put the tile up after we get there. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of tile we're going to use. It might be subway tile and it might be those mosaics that come in a sheet. But uh, we'll stick the tile up in the glass block uh, um, niches for your soap and toilet paper and stuff. We'll do all that when we get there. Once we get one sorted out and, and, and uh, you know, show them how to do it, then uh, they'll do the next six. Not a problem. And we're going to shift into self-leveling compound for the uh, the floors and the roofs. The roofs are uh, actually uh, a quarter to the foot slope, the mezzanine and the top, and the top cap uh, for water drainage. But uh, we couldn't uh, uh, carry enough water to keep that uh, concrete hydrated when it cured. So we got some uh, hairline surface cracks and... Uh, and some of them, uh, um, well, actually, we have some four-inch holes there. We have to pour concrete through to, to make some stuff under downstairs. This is to fill the forms up. And we haven't done that up there. So the water runs in that four-inch hole and uh, puts water in the house. Of course, we're going to put uh, uh, probably, uh, what's 16 inches? Uh, 40 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters uh, ceramic tile on the roof. Being that it's round, I will put a compass rose up there if I have my druthers. You know, north, south, east, and west, and then uh, markers every five degrees around it. And uh, anyway, we have one, the other cement mixers trapped on the roof because the stairs looked like they weren't safe, and they asked me if I wanted to fix them. And I said, no, just dismantle them all together. We're not going to work on the roof till we get back. And uh, I don't want anybody falling off anything up there. There's no handrail. And, and you know, that uh, uh, stairs don't go bad or like rot overnight. It, it's one of those growing things that, um, it, 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 it's like putting a frog in water. Throw him in hot water, he'll jump out. Put him in cold water, it would be boiling away with him still sitting there. They don't figure it out. Okay. Uh... Remember the sick people. There's less of them now. And the little girl you saw in the, in the picture, she's now uh, uh, not got her mother because her mother died of it. She has problems with diabetes, and they put her in the hospital for that. And uh, she caught COVID within the first week she was there. And, and because she was weakened by the diabetes, they killed her in three days after they diagnosed her. But she was clear of it or they wouldn't have put her in the hospital. I mean, they, they check it when you get there. Okay, I'll end the video. See y'all later.